Thank you very much, and I want to thank our witnesses for uh, being with us and staying through all of this. Uh, Governor Snyder, based on the record before the committee, many of your top advisors and key State officials knew there were problems with Flint's drinking water, but you say you were not aware. And I'd like to run through what uh, these people knew. First, uh, let me ask you about one of your top legal advisors in your office, Michael Godola. He wrote an email <clears throat> on October 14, 2014, stating, and I quote, the notion that I would be getting my drinking water from the Flint River is downright scary. Too bad the emergency manager didn't ask me what I thought, though I'm sure he heard it from plenty of others. My mom is a city resident. Nice to know she's drinking water with elevated chlorine levels and fecal coliform. coliform. They should try to get back on the Detroit system as a stopgap as soon as possible before this thing gets too far out of control." End of quote. That was written in America by one of your top legal advisors. Would you, would you consider him a top legal advisor? Yes. Okay. Do you take your legal advisor's advice? On legal matters. Yeah. All right. Did you, do you remember hearing any of this, getting this? I don't recall discussing it with him, and I don't believe I was on that email. Okay. You didn't receive this email in 2014, and so did you know that your top legal advisor even raised these kind of concerns? I don't recall. I recall we were concerned about water in Flint, though. Again, the issue was not a lead issue at that time. There was issues with E. coli and the odor and color of the water. You know, Governor, I keep hearing that hearing you say things like that, but I swear to God, if uh, somebody gave me water that looked like urine and had a smell to it, I'm sorry, I, you know, maybe, maybe your standard is different. I wouldn't want my family drinking it, and I wouldn't want to be drinking it. And m my standard is I want for my constituents what I want for my own my own family. And, but let's go on. Let me turn to your top officials at the uh, MDEQ. On April 17, 2014, about a week before they switched to the Flint River, the water quality supervisor at the Flint plant sent an email to three top MDEQ officials, Adam Rosenball, Mike Fisby, and Stephen Bush. And let me tell you what he wrote, and I quote, if water is distributed from this plant in the next couple of weeks, it will be against my direction. I need time to adequately train additional staff and to update our monitoring plans before I will feel we are ready. I will reiterate this to management above me, but they seem to have their own agenda. Did you uh, know that the water quality supervisor warned your top officials at MDEQ not to go forward one week earlier? I, to my knowledge, I had no awareness of that email. That's not what I asked you. I said, did you, were you aware that they were con had concerns? Uh, no. Okay. I don't recall any. All right. Let me uh, turn to the director of urban initiatives in your office, Harvey Hollins. In mid-March 2015, Mr. Hollins received an email warning him that there had been a, quote, significant uptick, unquote, in the number of reported Legionnaires' disease cases. Were you aware of that, uh, that last March? Were you aware of that? Uh, not to my knowledge. Okay. Let me turn to your former Chief of Staff, Mr. Muchmore. Now, I, I want to make sure, you know, somebody, I think, I don't know whether it was Ms. Lawrence, somebody was asking you about the structure of, of uh, the way things are situated in your office. But in, in congressional offices, 
for the most part, your, 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 your chief of staff answers to no one but the congressman. Now, is there anybody in between you and the chief of staff? No. All right. So he, the chief of staff will answer directly to you? Yes. All right. And if, the, if it's logical that if the chief of staff had some concerns and was saying we ought to do certain things, doesn't it seem logical that that would come to you? I don't recall specific conversations. We had discussions about water quality in Flint, and we were working a number of issues. You mentioned Harvey Hollins. I was working with the chief of staff and Harvey Hollins to get a donation of filters mm -hmm. to deal with the odor and color issues uh -huh. for, the, for a pastor's group in Flint. Well, in July, uh, Mr. Muchmore, your chief of staff, he mm -hmm. sent an email warning that residents, quote, are concerned, and rightfully so, about the lead level studies they are receiving and the quote, and that they, quote, they are basically getting blown off by us, end of quote. You were not on that email either, were you? No, I don't believe so. Uh, did, uh, so he didn't forward it to you? Uh, I don't recall ever receiving it. Does he, it alarm you that he's saying that, that they were blown off? Um, that the, in, the, 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 in, in other words, your constituents, the ones that you asked to vote for you, the ones that you are supposed to be about the business of improving their lives, were saying that they were being blown off? Does that bother you? I mean, when you look back at it. I'm not saying you knew about it. I'm just asking you, would it bother you? In terms of looking at the record, as I recall, he went out to both DEQ and DHHS and asked the experts the question is, in terms of the water being safe or not, and they told him it was. And that was wrong. Now, in retrospect. Uh, okay. It looks like almost everyone knew about these problems except you. Uh, you were completely missing in action. Uh, that's, that's not leadership, do you think? Mr. I Governor? was not missing in action, Congressman. I was had ongoing discussions about a number of water issues in Flint. I received several briefings on it, had a number of discussions, and the continuing response from the experts, whether to Dennis Munchmore or other people, when you look at the record, is they would tell you it was safe. Now, you can understand why the residents of Flint would be skeptical about what you're saying, right? I mean, keep, I I mean they, 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 they're not like us. I mean, they, they just know somebody, they say, chief of staff, that sounds like somebody very important, sounds like somebody that would answer directly to the, the governor. I mean, you can kind of understand that concern, can you? I absolutely do, sir, and I'm going to have to live with this my entire life. On your website, but uh, the governor, you know what? You know, I've heard you say that, but I've got to tell you, their children have got to live with it, the damage that has been done for the rest of their lives. And it is painfully painful to think that a child could be damaged until the day they die, and that their destiny has been cut off and messed up. So yeah, you have to live with it, but they, many of these children will never be what God intended them to be when they were born and conceived. I just have a few more questions. On your website, you say to the people of Michigan, quote, we will learn from this experience, but, entire, but an entire generation has been poised. Governor, what are those children supposed to learn from your utter lack of, of uh, let's, say, let's say from this incident, what are they supposed to learn? One of the terrible parts of all this is there's a huge issue in addition to all their medical issues and educational issues, as you mentioned, sir. But there's a question of trust in government. Yeah. And there's good reason for them to ask that question. And that's going to take a huge amount of time to earn back, if it can be earned back. And it involves getting third-party experts, such as Professor Edwards and Dr. Mona, to be part of the process so people can have confidence in people they trust that were the heroes that helped bring this issue up. Governor Scott, I would like to talk to you about your priorities for a minute. In your administration, you have shown over and over again that money is a, a high priority, despite the fact that Michigan had a, a budget surplus, you did not even bother asking the legislature to provide the money necessary to move Flint back to the Detroit water. The truth, Governor Snyder, is that uh, Flint was not, did not seem to be a priority because on January 24, 2015, you sent an email to your staff with a list of priorities for 2015. 
most of uh, the document is redacted. But we can see that number 36 on the list, number 36 on the list, was the Flint water system. So, Governor, Flint water was not uh, your first priority. It was not in the top 10, wasn't even in the top 20, not even in the top 30. Flint was number 36. Shouldn't the children and the residents of Flint have been higher on your priority list, Mr. Governor? In retrospect, with it becoming a true safety issue with the lead issue, it should have been higher. That was not the issue at the time. Now, Mr. Governor, we also know uh, what you do prioritize. When things got rough for you and your administration started being investigated by law enforcement, you got the people of Michigan to pay your legal fees. Uh, Governor, do you admit here today that you have asked the people of Michigan for more than $1 million to pay for your criminal and civil defense fees? Yes. And it makes me sick to, to think you found a way to have the State of Michigan pay over $1 million in legal fees, yet you thought so little of the people in Flint that you could not be bothered to ask the legitimate the legislature for, for money to switch them over to clean water. You cannot be trusted, and, and, and I, I got to tell you, uh, you, you need, to, you need to, to, to resign. Yeah. Mr. Governor, I, I know we're at the end of the hearing. I want to, I, and I, we're at the end, right? So we, I just want to thank both of you for being here. And what, we've got to do better than this. We all deserve better. And I told the chairman from the very beginning, uh, no matter who is responsible, we wanted to, to address this issue. And one of the things, Mr. Governor, 15 of your people, you talk about transparency, but 15 of your people refuse to talk to us, refuse. So uh, I hope that, that you will urge them. I, I saw, read something yesterday where you said you urged them to, to, to talk. We need, we need to hear from them. All right? Thank you, sir.